So after the after the Nuff said, um, you know, period, you then ended up on obese. Yeah, like um, so I did my first two joints on Nuff said, and uh, the thing was like the, from pretty much like I think it was around two thousand and two or something like that. But um, I produced pretty much the bulk of uh, Capricorn Cat with Pegs, and I did ha- about half the beats on. Muff's solo record on Obese and I was touring with Peg so that was the real clincher is like, I was sort of like doing all these shows and like doing his record and we just I think we just started working on Axis um, and he was just like bugging me the whole time it's like you should sign an Obese and like you know I want to put a record out da, da, da. and I think I was just really frustrated with Nuff Said because it was just so like staunchly underground and in, and I really wanted to like you know make music that was like to me it was more of a career thing Mm. and i think for those guys it was kind of just they just yeah staunchly stuck to keeping it at a certain level they didn't want to like you know even put money into promotion they just wanted to be word of mouth and yeah i think i just kind of like i grew out of it i guess i wanted to see what else i could do and like having someone in your ear saying like i want to put your record out that's just yeah (laughs) so that's what happened plus we were touring so it sort of made more sense because i was producing and Mixing and mastering heaps of shit on Obese. Like I was just doing so much work for Obese and touring that sort of, it made a lot of sense to sign as well. Yeah. And then, um, so you, like Axis, Peg's, Peg's album Axis, um, which I remember when I heard that, I was like, wow, this is front to back. Like, yeah, right. It's like every, I felt like yeah. he just didn't waste any yeah, it was a very concise pen. sort of record. Oh. The one thing I really remember about that as well is he let me have like a, a real free reign with like the production as well. So like he didn't really turn down like many ideas as far as like what I thought he would sound good over. Mm. But um, yeah, he kind of, he really did like s- as far as the content and everything that was all like his thing. I think he wanted to call it the, uh, live from the access of evil. And I was <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> you dude, you can't do that. Like, cause at the time, like, I think he was kind of, it's one of those things in Australia, you know, you got that tall poppy thing. And like, and I think at the time when he was putting out access, I think a lot of people had like feelings about that. He was, just, he was really trying to do something with Australian rap mm. and really trying to go a bit large with it. And I think, um, he was copping a bit of shit here and there. And I was just like, man, just like, you can't call it that. <laughs> Everyone thinks you're evil already. <laughs> so, yeah. And, um, I remember like one joint in particular, and I'm pretty sure it was your uh, production on it because did you do the whole album or you just I did, did uh i did everything i did all the beats and mixed it except for two tracks that suffer did so he yeah. did back then and uh this is for life oh so they're suffer produced yeah they're suffer produced tracks um yeah i did all the other stuff so chech and gorilla and all those ones yeah that i think is it called crow magnum oh yeah crow magnum yeah yeah and that's one of my favorite <laughs> like the, i love that joint the beat on that is just so yeah, I think I for know. the time it was kind of a bit progressive, like, Most and that's definitely. what I like about that record. It was like really forward thinking as far as production and everything. Like he t- took a lot of risks where like, you know, there was that whole, a lot of people were kind of do that funky kind of thing at the time. And I think he just like, we went for some real different kind of sounds and a little bit, um, it's almost like, I wouldn't say dillerish, but it definitely had that snappier kind of sound yeah. to it, you know? Those two years were like, that was like a real dope two years. Cause we did Hunger Pains, um, Axis and uh, Codes Over Colors records in that two-year period. So, mm. it was, yeah, it was good. And then... I, I didn't have a girlfriend at the time, man. I just got like, lots of time in the studio on my own. Yeah, well, man, I think a lot, yeah. of, pe- a lot of people would have that same story, man. Yeah, right. You know, you need the time. Yeah. Women take up the time. Man. <laughs> so. Whereabouts did the, uh, the album with Muff fit in? Um, yeah, like, cause, cause I'd done like a bunch of beats on, um, more than music. How that came about was that I was actually touring with pegs. So like, it was almost like underhanded in a way. Cause like, he just was like, I want to do, I want to, I want you to do a, like all the beats on my next record and I want to tour it. So I want you to come and like pretty much what you're doing with pegs. 
I want you to come on tour. So I was like, fuck, that's a lot. We want to do all the beats and do the shows. Like, fuck, man, you better put me on. I want equal billing. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my name's got to go on there as well. So that's when that whole thing came about. I was like, so yeah, we got on really well as friends and stuff. So it was like really easy to, yeah, produce and stuff. So. And you had that single, uh, was it Heaps Good? Yeah, Heaps Good. And that's the best beat I've ever made. <laughs> like, now, a lot of people will probably disagree. Yeah, I mean, you know? like, I know I know a lot of people really love that track. I just mean in terms of, like, yeah, it was almost like us doing that track was almost like a piss take because I think, like, at the time, he was kind of known as, like, the the thinking man's rapper. Like, he's just, like, hard on his sleeve and all that kind of shit. I guess what kind of, like, horror show and stuff do now is, like, he kind of spearheaded that kind of whole thing in Australia, I guess. Mm. But um, Heaps Good was kind of, like, our... Yeah, we're just kind of trying guess taking a piss out of ourselves like let's just see if we can just do like a kind of like more of a party kind of track yeah that's what it came off as yeah though, you, you know, know I mean? and yeah. i think it, it, it picked up it got picked up by yeah uh, we just radio. like so that was a funny thing with that record like that track in particular was really popular but we did this crazy thing where like uh all the sort of underground heads that you know guests knew me from nuff said and him as well from what he'd been doing um really fucking dug what we were doing and also triple j picked it up as well so yeah. we had this kind of dual thing going on where we were getting like we had a feature record on well all of our albums were feature records on triple j so they really from the get-go they kind of like you know supported us and stuff but we were able to also have like a staunch kind of audience as well it was mm. weird I don't, I don't know if that would really happen these days so much because it's so dissected like you're yeah. either like more of a poppy kind of act and you got that crowd or you sort of like just staunchly kind of like just you know hip-hop whatever but yeah um, there's yeah, very we just, few we, we just sort of like ran that weird line which is kind of cool yeah there's very few dudes that have that sort of crossover yeah like, you know i don't even know if you'd call it crossover it's just like hoods are an example yeah you know, exactly like, well yeah i mean funny I'm, thing about them is that they're just like such a fucking massive successful group like it's almost like i don't even put them in in the i mean yeah it's like they're just a massive band in australia like you know what i mean i think like a lot of their audience probably wouldn't even cross over so much into like hip-hop no nah. i'm mean, just speculating you know what i mean but well like, I, I hear that when when you go to a hood show these days what you see is a lot of families right you know like you see like yeah, the yeah. old man but that's the, the that's the cool thing though because they have like fans that are like like my my girlfriend's nephews like uh seven or something and he's like a massive hoods fan and then he's, they've got like fans that are kind of like 50 or something you yeah know what I mean? they're like yeah they're like the fucking australian beatles or some shit <laughs> you know what i mean it's like they have this massive draw yeah it's crazy because i know they just did that that arena tour and yeah. um i mean i think when we did the phone interview you know we briefly touched on that right. and it's just like there's not many groups period yeah, see, it's just like, like it, it sort of, diff I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's just like their success kind of, it it jumps over genre specific things. Like yeah. It's just more like they're just a, they're just a massively successful group that can do stuff like do a tour with an orchestra at stadiums. And sell the shit out. <laughs> and sell it out. <laughs> like continuously just sell yeah, it out. Yeah, it's crazy. Like the, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.